So, you've been eyeing FF14, a single-player JRPG cleverly disguised as an MMO, a game with an extensive world and breathtaking story, taking you to various feasters, such as the frozen wastes of Ishgard, the goddamn moon, and a conservative family's worst nightmare. Now, I'm not a new player. If I was, I wouldn't be so jaded. The only thing I knew about this game prior to playing it was that it was a cringe game filled with weebs, whose original release got straight up deleted for being an absolute pile of dog shit. And now here I am with over 3,000 hours played, a bunch of new friends and a smile on my face. Listen, you don't need to hide it, I too was attracted by the cute cat girls. But before you can even step foot in this new world, you must overcome the first major obstacle. <laughs> even I was stumped. Like an unsurmountable foe who stands in your way, striking fear into your very heart, but you're unable to take another step forward. And that was creating my very first character. Okay, listen here, if you didn't spend at least two hours perfecting your character, you are a damn liar. With the amount of options you get, picking one is just far too hard. From generic human to elf person to the most popular race in the game, by far, to actual jailbait. Well, honestly, you really can't go wrong here. Well, as long as you don't make the mistake of making a male character. Oh, I get it. You want to be a base male protagonist who goes around saving her around with a massive sword. But in this game of all things, uh, why, why would you do that? If you haven't realized already, FF14 is a certified Kuma game. And FF14 players themselves aren't down bad. They're down horrendous. Exhibit A, look at Uldar. Cat girls as far as the eye can see. Dressed in their tubey bottoms, she's wee healing tops, and other skimpy clothing. Need more? Look at Twitter, nothing but these cat-loving degenerates. As you can see, not a single male character in sight. Bro, get out of my shot! But then again, wanted to create a character who looks exactly like you. <gasps> You're not a disgusting self-inserter, are you? But I'm getting off track. Actually, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, character creator. When it comes to character creation, there are two groups of people. The first group consists of those whose sole desire is to create a character who looks exactly like them, aka the filthy self-inserters. Ugh. My guy, you're in a fantasy world. It's kind of in the title. Where is your sense of culture? And right next to these clowns, we have the more cultured folk. With their superior patrician taste and pure degeneracy, they will spend hours and hours handcrafting the perfect waifu. They want to f I mean, shower with love and affection. And definitely not use mods, because that is awful, and Yoshi said no. Just to make yourself insert, okay? And if you go into anyway, the only thing I can say to that is... You can fight a dragon. You can ride a dragon. You can fan the flames of revolution. You can get Isekai to a world on the brink of collapse. You can tour the furthest reaches of the universe. And you want to self-insert. I don't know, man. That's... that's kind of cringe. Well, whatever path you choose, just don't make a character you'll hate to look at, unless you actually want to give Square Enix more money and become a crippling Fantasia addict, which I honestly don't recommend. Anywho, we barely made it out of character creator with your brand new waifu or self-insert. And now we are one step closer to entering this final world of fantasy. Oh, but what's that? A new challenger approaches. One more obstacle stands in our way, with this one being more ferocious than the last. I wouldn't be surprised if you felt daunted, as this one challenge will decide the fate of your entire character. And that is selecting your very first class. Oh, sorry, I meant job. Silly me. Now, if you're like me, you spent an unholy amount of time mulling over which job to choose. Not just because I was indecisive, but because I didn't know you could swap them later. I wholly blame WoW for giving me this brain rot. Now, you can watch an extensive guide detailing all the jobs, what they evolved into, their strengths, their weaknesses, blah blah blah. Or you can just pick the job which has the best armor. <coughs> Dragoon! Which I should have done, and not picked a job which I would come to regret playing much later. Okay, we're done. I actually mean it this time. You pick your job and hopefully not hate yourself later. You give your character a fitting name, hit enter, and watch a cool ass cinematic. And now you're finally in. You can actually play the game now. So, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to your new prison. Welcome to your new home away from home, Limsla Mincer. Home to pirates, cute girls, and 99% of the game's population. Yup, whether you like it or not, the majority of your playtime will be spent in this accursed place, and that isn't optional. Yeah, other places like Uldar exist, but outside of getting quirky on a Friday night, you have no real reason to stay there. And Gridania is, well, 
Padania. Enough said. After becoming accustomed with the local culture, you can now make the logical choice of accepting every single quest you see, and ignoring the massive hint in the left corner. Again, I wholly blame WoW for giving me this brain hop. And so you actually start to do the MSQ, and you move from point to point and start to experience the sheer beauty of this game. And then you eventually quit because your friends told you to power through a realm we born, and you ended up getting bored to tears. Yep, that definitely didn't happen to me.